Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Liam's Hockey to kick off the week here. Short and sweet one for you, get you set for uh, what should be a pretty good week of hockey for the Canadian teams and everybody else as the rivalries continue. By the way, just finished watching Detroit and Columbus. Have a quick comment on that in uh, in just a second. But um, uh, the top stories today, and this is what we're going to try and roll out here. We're going to try and do four of these a week, four of these quick little hits here weekly going forward. And announcing sponsors hopefully later this week as well as we hit and miss on certain shows with them. Regardless, I'm going to bang these out uh, right through the till the uh, Stanley Cup is awarded. So take a few minutes here, have some fun. And um, kicking things off with really, well, it's Martin Luther King Day. And I'm going to touch on that a little bit later as well. But the big hockey story today would be Keith Yandel continuing his consecutive game streak. Basically, at the 11th hour, Joel Quenville and the Florida coaching staff deciding to put him in against the Chicago Blackhawks. Not only does he play consecutive game number 867, but he scores. He scored their second goal of the game. If you haven't seen the highlight of it, it's absolutely priceless. His celebration, you can tell he's pretty pumped. But um, I really got to say, I heard it best from my buddy, uh, Sean Simpson, on TSR, TSN 1200 radio here this morning. And, and uh, it's, it is a little bit ridiculous. Look, at some point in time, these streaks do end. All things come to an end. Doug Jarvis, who holds the all-time record, 964 games, started the 87 season with um, Whit Hartford. He played the first two games to continue that streak. He never missed a regular season game in his entire career. But the streak came to an end when they sat him for the they said, Doug, you're not playing. The next game, the third game for Hartford, and he said, you know what, I'm calling it a day. And he retired. And that was it for him. Like, eventually, it comes to a head where you just, you know, they just don't deem that you're good enough to be in the lineup that night. In the case of uh, Gary Unger, who's in second place at 914, he actually, long before Cal Ripken was doing this in baseball, Gary Unger was doing it to keep the streak alive. He was dressing and playing a shift or two and they were doing it just to keep the streak alive and that, that listen that's that that blows out the integrity of the game and Doug Jarvis didn't want that and when they told him he was going to sit he said you know what I've, I'm done now it should be pointed out that Doug Jarvis actually did miss hockey games well, they were playoff games he missed four playoff games on Montreal's run to the Stanley Cup in 1979 he fell badly at practice and bruised his knee and ended up missing four games. But he never missed a regular season game. And something else that should be pointed out. That Doug Jarvis was not drafted by the Montreal Canadiens. He was drafted by the Toronto Maple Leafs in 1975. And Montreal traded for him. Thank you, Sam Pollock. And they traded a player by the name of Greg Hubick. Hands up. How many people remember Greg, Greg Hubick? So, again, just another great trade by uh, Trader Sam. That's why he's the greatest GM in NHL history. And they picked up Doug Jarvis in his first four years in the NHL. He won four Stanley Cups. It's Frank Selke winner in 84. One of the greatest face-off men and penalty killer in NHL history. He deserves all the accolades. Whether Yandel, keep in mind, you got Keith Yandel, Patrick Marlowe, and Phil Kessel are all next in line. After you get down past Jarvis and Unger and Steve Larmer. You say, well, Liam, how did Steve Larmer's streak end at 884? Because of a contract dispute. Of all things, with the Chicago Blackhawks, they had everything lined up for him to pass Doug Jarvis. It would have been on, see, at that time, the NHL was going to, I believe that was a, one of the two years that they went to an 84-game schedule with neutral site games. And they had it all lined up. They were going to have him pass Doug Jarvis for career game 965 against L.A. and Wayne Gretzky. And then he gets in a contract dispute with the Chicago ownership and management. And he ends up getting traded to the Rangers, which I'm sure in the big picture he didn't mind because he won a Stanley Cup with them. And Steve Larmer should be in the Hockey Hall of Fame. It's ridiculous that he's not. But let's put in another Russian. Don't even get me going. Don't even get me going. Put another Russian from, from the 72 series. Anyway, that's his thoughts on Yandel. Uh, this streak I do not think will survive the season. Florida are not that strong a team. He's going to have to come out of the lineup. They're carrying 11 defensemen right now. 
And, okay, he played and he scored. Maybe it buys him a little. He's 34 years old. Eventually, every dog has his day. Why is Patrick Marlowe being carried by the San Jose Sharks right now? Because he's going to pass Gordie Howe's career games mark this season. If he stays healthy and they play him in the lineup. Is he actually good enough to be in their starting 12 right now? I, I haven't seen enough of their action to make that determination. So we'll see. I'll reserve judgment on that one. Anyway, that's the Andal story. Um, Martin Luther King Day today has mentioned watched uh, Columbus, Detroit. Nice little mini uh, mini live ball there. The end of the game, <laughs> right after Bobby Ryan bang going in. I, 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 you know, Bobby took a lot of heat here with that contract and couldn't live up to it. And then, you know, sadly taking the time off for the uh, for the affliction that he had, and then to come back from it and score that hat trick against Vancouver. One of the greatest feel-good stories in the last, I don't know how many years in hockey history. So, uh, I was uh, he banged that in and then he dropped the gloves and got <laughs> He fought and, uh, and uh, Dylan Larkin got into it with Zach Wierenski. And these guys are best friends. Hey, these weren't knocked down, drag him out brawls. But they all dropped the gloves. It was fantastic. Great little scrum. Columbus held on for the win with a winning goal coming from Dubois on a beautiful play. And it's just... Uh, Enhancing his trade capital, I guess. Who knows? Who knows? But uh, he scored it on Martin Luther King Day. And that sort of ties in how we're going to finish up today here. Uh, you know, today, uh, this day in hockey, ironically, on Martin Luther King Day, and the way it works in the States is Martin Luther King's birthday is January 15th. We all know he was assassinated, tragically, sadly, horrendously, on April 4th, 1968. He was born January 15th. 1929, but they celebrate it the third Monday of every January in the United States of America. And I've got on my fridge right now, and I'm going to take a picture of it, and it'll be my, my shot here for this little hit today. Um, lives, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. I may have mixed up a word or two, but it's, uh, I've had that on my fridge for 14 years. And, and uh, it's a little yellowed, and it's on there with uh, some old bits from my father, uh, the late Rory Bradley, and uh, the late Mike Doyle, and lots of pictures of my kids. But I've got that on there from Martin Luther King. That was a rather tumultuous time in my life, 14 years ago. If you know me personally, you may know what was going on. Nothing horrendous or life-threatening, just, you know, the ups and downs of living. And uh, I put that on there. And, and I also... Uh, I, it's unbelievable. Willie O'Ree, who the Boston Bruins are going to retire his number 22. You may recall I talked about uh, sweater retire, retired sweater numbers the other day because number 9 is the most retired sweater in NHL history. It's retired for 13 players a total of 15 times because Bobby Hall and Gordie Howe have it retired twice. Boston Bruins have announced they're going to retire number 22 in honor of Willie O'Ree. But on this day, he played his first ever game in the NHL. And, and, it's, and they just made the announcement. And today is Martin Luther King Day in the United States of America. That's incredible that, that, how that's all tying together. The other little twist on it, though, is that Willie O'Ree did not wear number 22 in his debut with the Boston Bruins. He wore number 18 when he made his second stint, came up and played the, the, the most games that he did play for them, which came a few seasons later. He wore sweater number 22, so that's what they're uh, that's what they're re they're retiring, and this will be the third number 22 retired in NHL history. For the other two being Mike Bossy and Daniel Sedin of the Vancouver Canucks. I do not believe there's another one, and I also asked in the last little podcast Zoomcast here that we did, what number is the second most retired in NHL history? Number nine is first. Number seven is second with 10 players having number seven retired in NHL history. I'll let you figure out the names, or you can message me, or when we come up for air and we're allowed out, I'll meet you for a beer, and I'll give you the names there. That's, uh, that's pretty much it. Okay, so predictions for tonight. I uh, was fairly close on the Leaf game, way off on the Hab game. I thought Edmonton would win that game. That was one of the most dominating performances I've seen from a Montreal Canadian team. They had this going last year as well at the start of the season. And uh, then they got the they got Drew A and uh, Kokanami, I think, both got hurt. 
at uh, and the game against Washington to start last season, and things, and then they started their they had their first of uh, of eight straight losses. So, but they sure played well on Saturday night against Edmonton. And what we're seeing in the early trend here is the the second game of of these back to backs. The team the team that lost has rebounded quite nicely. So. I called Edmonton to win Saturday. They didn't. Montreal handled him pretty good. McDavid had an assist, but he was virtually invisible. He had a breakaway. Uh, you know, so I shouldn't say totally invisible, that's for sure. But, I mean, by McDavid's standards, he did very little. And and uh, uh, I think you're going to hear from him tonight. I think Mr. McDavid will get himself noticed a little bit more substantially tonight. So, I'll call that Edmonton victory that I called on Saturday. I'll call, I'll call it tonight. And I'm a half fan, so I'm going to hope I'm wrong. But uh, Montreal's off to a great start here. Three points, four games. They're on the road. It's, you know, starting, I think, five, six games here to start. So, so good on them. So we'll go with that. That's going to do it uh, for today. I'm going to, uh, of course, finish, as I always do, with some Irish whiskey. And, uh, and today's toast. And I'm going to toast Martin Luther King today. And it's got a nice tie into a second name that I'm going to mention because... Um, for me, personally, in terms of becoming aware of the significant amount of racism that still sadly exists in our world, and it's so incredibly evident daily, weekly, monthly, and definitely annually, just south of the 49th year in the United States of America, it really does still exist worldwide, uh, racism in, in, in many, many forms. And for me, a real eye-opener and, and a real ability to learn and find out what a, a lot of people who were subject to racism had to endure happened for me in 1981 when I became a student at Seneca College and I had the privilege and honor of meeting Spider Jones, Chuck Spider Jones, one of the top amateur boxers in Canadian history. And... He's in the uh, Canadian Boxing Hall of Fame, and he is an absolute prince of a man. And recently, his sister Rosemary passed away. He, he's part of a pretty big family, and, and sadly, he has lost some siblings previously. But his sister Rosemary just recently passed away. And Spider was such an inspiration for me at that time. Not, not just for that, but he's older. And, and I, I really leaned on him to make it through those two years of school. And I showed up there with a chip on my shoulder from a little rural town going to Toronto, 22. And, uh, you know, a <laughs> little on the abrasive side. And meeting Spider, he got me through. So I want to toast the memory of Martin Luther King on Martin Luther King Day, the United States of America, so just three days past his birthday. And the memory of Rosemary Jones, I don't know if what her married name was. She may have had one, I'm not even sure, can't recall. But I'll go by the name she was given at birth. And that's Rosemary Jones, Spider's sister. God bless you. God bless Martin Luther King. And, uh, and that's, that's it for today. So we'll catch you soon. Have a good one. G'day. Damn, that's good.